Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. I apologise firstly for the uh, camera shake. I'm having to do this on my own today. Uh, my camera person is uh, unavailable and doing, well, other things. Um, but anyway, I've recently got to purchase myself one of these dual XGT chargers. And because of that, I've now got to change my setup for my base unit. Um, and by base unit, I mean the bottom trolley on my Milwaukee pack out system. So I'm gonna give you a quick run through of how I've got it set up at the moment, and I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna change it. So inside the box, I've got the totes, which are carrying all my batteries and my USB adapter for the LXT batteries. But underneath, I'll take these out. We can see that I've got my adapters for the LXT charging, so I can use those in conjunction with the XGT chargers, of which I have two of those. As you can see, I've cut the foam out to make all these fit, and uh, so they don't all move around and helps with any, uh, with any impact issues. Also, I've got in here Tupperware, which usually has coffee stuff in it, which obviously is empty at the moment. And obviously the all important coffee machine, which probably won't go back in here again because of this. So whilst I was looking at all of this and with the new charger that's going to go in here, I discovered that when I looked at the lid, so let's just refocus the camera. Actually, when I looked into the lid, I noticed that there are a few little screw holes. Two there, two on the other side, and there's two down at the bottom here. So it, I thought to myself, can I mount the charger on the lid and have all the gubbins down in the actual tray itself? So this is how I did it. So the first thing I did was I chose two points to measure from. Now on the top of these, you can see where the plastic kicks out. So I went from the top edge corner all the way down to the base, and I did the same on the outer two edges. And that gave me a size of 46 by 30 centimeters. So I cut the timber out, and then from there, I decided, well, I only want two points of measurement. So I made sure that every measurement I made was from the top and from the left. Now, the reason being for that is because when your timber's up on there, you can, there is a little bit of play in it, both directions. And by keeping it just the two points of measurement, you're always gonna get your holes in the right places because they're always gonna be at the right equidistance from each other. So the first thing I did was I marked out and I drilled my five holes. Now, if you look closely on that one, I did miss it a little bit, but I'm just gonna use this as a template. And what I'll do afterwards is I'll take a picture of this and I'll put it up with a bit of music. So anybody else that wants to do this, all you have to do is just go to that point and you can look at the picture and you have all the measurements there ready for you to go. So that was basically my starting point. So I did all those and then I fixed it into position. The screws I'm using are three and a half millimeters by 25 millimeters so they're not too long that I'll go straight through the top of the lid and they're also wood screws so they get a good fixing into the plastic for the bottom two holes I'm using 40 mil screws because the holes are a little bit deeper and I just loosely put it into position just to make sure that all the fixings do line up and obviously I know that one doesn't because the hole is slightly off But as you can see, it's all there. It's all perfectly in place, more or less. So the biggest trick to do now is to find out whether there's gonna be any issues with that bottom lip catching on anything, especially this little bit down here, which you probably can't see in the camera. 
So there's a little lip on the bottom here. So I just need to make sure that when I close this lid down, it doesn't catch on this. So a really easy way to find out whether there's any issues when I come to close the box. So obviously you just close the lid and you can feel it. But if you put the torch on, on your phone, run the camera running, try and get it at a reasonably good angle. It's all a bit of guesswork at this stage, but then if you close the lid with the light on, you'll see exactly how it fits and if there's any issues that I need to look at. So all I need to do now is just play that video back and go from there. Now I know that this lid will shut without any issues, it's time to measure up where I want to put this. So what I did was just gave it a quick look around and kind of think for, well, where do I think the best place is it gonna fit for me? And I decided to go bottom left-hand corner because obviously the cable's on the right-hand side. It keeps the weight towards the bottom of the lid so there's no risk of it accidentally closing on me. And of course, it gives me a little bit more space up the top if I wanna put anything else on there. So now I've got to take this board back off. I need to measure up all the holes and the fixing points and get those in. I'm key to help you out with this next bit because on the base of it, they've written the lengths in millimeters and in inches for where the, the holes are distance wise. And on the side, there's a gap. So you can easily see whether you've got your screw or your bolt in the right position for when you lock it in. And on the very top, there's two holes, one on either side, which you just go straight down through. So what I've done, and obviously you saw this at the beginning, is I've drilled holes and I've used T-nuts. Main reason is because T-nuts give you that extra strength because of the compression force, because it's always pulling against the board so it locks itself in. And also, I can't get to these fixing screws if the unit charger is in the way. So I have to fit the charger after I fitted the base plate to the inside of the lid. And obviously once you've got it all measured up and you put your T-nuts in the back, just make sure that everything lines up correctly because you don't want to get to the end of it and find out you've got issues with holes not lining up and, and your bolts being too long, which incidentally is exactly what I'm gonna check here. I mean, I'm only doing these up finger tight uh, just to make sure that they do go in. Because I just wanna make sure that on the back, we see that the nuts or the bolts even, sorry, don't protrude through the other side of the T-nuts, which could interfere with the lid itself. So you can also see that I've got lots of space running across the top, which is great because what I can do now, which is an idea I had, is I could add a double socket in that top corner. And I'm gonna put a USB double socket in here, basically because, well, apart from anything else, that's what I, I've got lying around um, and I've got it spare. And also having a double socket here basically means I can plug the charger in, I can also have an extension lead running off of it or my vacuum running off of it. And being USB, occasionally you get caught short where because I've got a USB chargeable headlight, uh, head torch, and obviously sometimes your mobile phone goes flat. So it gives you an extra place that you can charge up your devices while still using the main power for the charger and whatever else that you need to plug into it. This is a socket I'm gonna be using. It's a flat plated one. It's just been kicking around in the workshop for a little while. So they're just a three amp USB. Um, but one thing to bear in mind if you're gonna go down this route is that how much more space they take up in the back of the back box. So when you come to do this, be aware of how much space there isn't going to be in the back box. It's just to be sure that when you put your gland in, you've got plenty of space to go, so I'm gonna go in this top corner here. My next task is just to remove everything that I put on here so I can use the backboard as my template for the actual one that I'm going to use. It means I can get rid of all the pencil lines, the experimental holes that I had for the cable rear here which didn't work, and of course I can readjust the hole that's just underneath here for the fixing point which is just one or two millimeters out of skew, but it's enough to not put it in the right place. Additionally to that, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a couple of little holes either side of where the cable is, so I can put a cable tie through, that helps support the cable when it's in transit and reduce the stress on the grommet. And it also means I can put one on this cable here. Mm -hmm. 
Once you've marked out your template, assuming that you do go down this route, it's always definitely worth double checking all your numbers and making sure everything is in line with each other. For example, where I've had to use a black pen because my pencil isn't thin enough to get into the hole, it's bled into the wood and it's made the holes slightly larger. So down here we can see that obviously, I mean, we already knew that that one was off, but I had to put the black mark in there to give me a reference point. So as you can see, now I've got my mark there. I know that's going to be in the right place. So what I'm going to do now is just put pilot holes for all of these. I'm going to flip the board over. I'm going to use a spade bit to cut into the plywood very slightly so that the T nuts actually sink in. <laughs> ready to go now I could put a finish on there and I could do the edges off of that but just for now let's just get it in there and if you're going to use your cable ties don't forget to put them in now because once this board is in it's too late so There we have it. All I've got to do now is sort out the cables with the cable ties. But before I do that, I have one vital thing left to do, and that's to sort out what I'm gonna do with the batteries. But that's gonna come in part two. Thank you for watching this part. I hope you found it informative. And if you want to see the plan of all the measurements, I'm gonna put that right at the end of the video, uh, so you can just pause it to your heart's content and copy everything down. I hope this has all been informative for you, and I hope to see you very soon in part two.